Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Herc Collects Comics. Uh, it's my YouTube channel, relatively new to the YouTube community. I thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe. Um, this week coming up, we have a big week in the New York, New Jersey area. New York Comic Con comes to town from Thursday to Sunday, October 8th to the 11th. Very excited to be going on Friday and Sunday. I purposely avoid Saturday because it's a madhouse there. Uh, an unbelievable amount of people flock to the Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan every year this time. This is one of the two big... This and the San Diego Comic Con are probably the two biggest uh, comic conventions in the country. And uh, I went last year, had a fantastic time. And I look forward to going this year again. Uh, one of the things I plan on doing is submitting some books to CGC. Also plan on getting some books uh, professionally professionally pressed by a company based out in Florida, CFP Comics, that will be attending the convention. So those books are already decided. I'm just going to share those here today, what I plan on submitting next week. Uh, four books for pressing. Uh, the first one I'll start with the most current is... Star Wars, number 42, one of the five issues in the Empire Strikes Back run uh, from the original series. And this is an absolutely beautiful cover. I want to say that this is close to a, a 9.8, uh, hoping that um, getting it pressed will fix some of the minor imperfections that are in this area here. There are some awkward creases. Not sure if pressing can get it out or not, but I figure for the 10 15 bucks, it's worth a shot. First appearance above a FET, uh, beautiful colors, and uh, as I said in another video, I always prefer the uh, character bus uh, for the uh, direct editions as opposed to the barcode for the newsstand. Just looks so much better. So this is going to be one of the books that I am going to submit for pressing. Uh, next is going to be uh, an amazing Spider-Man number 57. This book here uh, features artwork by one of my favorite artists, John Romita. As you can see, there is uh, beautiful crisp colors uh, for this book. Uh, there is, you can't see too well from the video, and also because it's a light yellow here where Spider-Man's legs are, there are some dense uh, imperfections. Uh, I think that they could be pressed... There's also some spine ticks here um, that have broken color. So I'm not really sure how much of an improvement it will be, but I figured it's a nice silver age book. Let me do the squeeze the best possible grade that I can. But uh, love John Romita's artwork, and so anytime I can get my hands on a decent copy, uh, you know, want to get it graded, and that, and that's what I'll do with all these books that are getting pressed. They'll get pressed first, and then they'll get sent off to CGC. I got lucky earlier in the year and I got my hands on some Conan number one from 1971. I came across two books. This one here has some denting here. Um, I think, uh, you know, pressing it could help as well as the corner. Um, but overall, it's a pretty crisp book. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe 8.5, 9.0 if I'm lucky. Maybe pressing it will get it to a 9.0, 9.2. Um, but I got a good deal on it, and I think it's going to score, my gut says, above 9. The second one was a little bit better condition, but also in the same area where the staple is here, um, there's some imperfections that I think pressing can help with. So these are great, uh, great key books here. 1971, Conan the Barbarian. Roy Thomas had a successful and long run with this. And I just, I've always loved Conan. He's, uh, you know, the Bronze Age Barbarian. And um, sometimes I think he's forgotten when people talk about heroes from the 1970s. He had a very strong run for Marvel. And uh, it was something that they initially took a gamble on. Uh, Roy Thomas really went out of his way to get the right so that he could put this comic uh, in uh, this story, rather, Robert E. Howard stories in comic book format. So have two of these. Again, you know, they're bright colors. I think they're in pretty good condition. I think this one here is already in the 9.0 range. And um, again, getting these four books pressed in the hope that I'll squeeze the best possible grades that I can. Uh, then I have a few books that I'm going to submit to CGC, um, you know, just straight up. Hopefully you'll see them on 
Friday, bright and early, and you know before their lines get long, so that I can submit some books. This uh, first book that I'm going to submit without pressing or anything, just straight to CGC. It's uh, probably in the 9.0, uh, 9.8 range, but there's a really nasty. I'm not sure if you can see here a split on the corner. This is Star Wars 81. And uh, it's a beautiful painted cover by Tom Palmer. One of my favorite covers from the original uh, series. You got Chewbacca in there, Princess Leia, the whole gang. Boba Fett, the Millennium Falcon. So I really like this. Corner may prevent from getting 9.8, but no big deal. I really like the book. It's a great story. And um, you know, even if it comes back at 9.6, I'll be content. Um, beautiful, beautiful copy. Next here is... Uh, you guys remember first graphic novels? They were um, some graphic novels that, well, truthfully speaking, I only know of the ones that they did that were turtle related. They did a total of four volumes. This one here collects the, I'm drawing a blank. I don't know if it's the first three or the first four issues, possibly just the first three, uh, you know, the Mausers and the, you know, the origin. Uh, this here is a very good copy. Um, at first, I wasn't sure if it can get graded, but I saw one once graded on eBay, and uh, it's pretty thick. You can see here my thumb. It's pretty thick trade paperback, but it's unread. Looks case fresh. It's from 1986. It was the first time that these stories were done in color. Um, beautiful book. I have all four volumes. Uh, reader copy. I read them more than once, but got my hands out. There were, I believe, five printings. This is a first print from 1986, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, beautiful cover by Kevin Eastman, big TMT guy, uh, TMNT, rather, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And so this will be getting submitted. Also, here, uh, some early Punisher, second appearance of the Punisher. Uh, Marvel Super Action featuring America, America's Greatest Crime Destroyer. Uh, this has a cover by Tony DeZunga. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that right. But this is a great book. The spine is in uh, fantastic shape, as are the corners. Um, white pages. I actually have a copy of this graded 8.0 with white pages, which I'll probably end up selling once I get this one back from CGC because... I have a feeling it's going to pull much higher. Again, the second appearance of the Punisher, early stuff here. I want to say 1976. I'll check my graded copy real quick. Yeah, January 1st, 1976. This is my graded version, 8.0, white pages. But um, I love Punisher, and anytime I can get my hands on some of the more unusual or not as common books of him, I do. So these three, I'm definitely going to get graded, no, no question. Then I got another four, which I'm on the fence on. And, um, you know, if you happen to see this video in time, please feel free to give me some recommendations. I have a total of four. I'll probably end up only doing two to three. Let me know which of these you think I should or should not. Uh, really big into the new Star Wars stuff, that's how. And I've been digging the Lando series. Got my hands on this. It's a variant from the San Diego Comic Con that just took place this past summer. Um, beautiful old school homage to the Topps trading cards back in the 1977, 1976. Uh, this here is a beautiful uh, cover. Uh, I'm thinking about getting this signed by Charles Soule, who will be at the New York Comic Con and getting it a signature series, but we'll see. This is probably going to be the ones that I submit because I really dig the, uh, the variant. Another Star Wars, the new run that's just out, Shattered Empire. Going to be telling the next phase of the Star Wars as The Force Awakens uh, comes upon us. I'll probably get... I'm kind of, right now, got my hands full with the regular Star Wars run and the Darth Vader. So I'll probably wait a little bit on this one uh, before I jump in reading it. But I love this variant cover here, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I will probably get this CGC as well. Uh, the next two, I guess, are going to be where I figure out, oh, maybe next time or or what. This was a beautiful book written by Peter David, The Incredible Hulk vs. Venom. It was a one-shot uh, from 1994. And this wasn't something that you could pick up at... Um, you know, your local shop. You had to be a part of the Marvel 
club, whatever the monthly mail away thing was. I never did that to be honest, but you got it through mail order and it's an absolutely beautiful cover. It pops up a little bit. I got two copies of these and I wanted to get this one graded because I've always been a fan of Eddie Brock and Venom and of course the Hulk smash. I love Hulk. Uh, so this is uh, a modern book, but a relatively rare model book. I don't really think a lot of people have this, but it's a fun read. You know, they end up fighting a little bit in the beginning. Hulk ends up letting them know who's boss, and then they end up teaming up to fight the real threat who's trying to destroy the city for a ransom. But this is a fun read. Next one here I'm going to take out of the plastic. I, you know, time-consuming to do that for every book. But this one here has something on the back that I want to show, which is one of the reasons why I'm uh, contemplating submitting it this week at the convention. So this is a beautiful copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 32, volume four. Uh, this was limited to about a thousand copies. Mirage really isn't publishing books, but when Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman made that deal a few years back with Nickelodeon for the rights of the Turtles, one of the things that were in the contract uh, for Peter Laird was that he would reserve the right to pen and create X amount of books uh, within a year. And so he doesn't really issue these uh, like, you know, like other book and titles out there with IDW, their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles title out with IDW. But uh, this one here is extra nice because it has this on the back and it shows, um, you know, where, Mah you know, Mirage Studios was headquartered when they first started. Um, it has some really, really old vintage photos of Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman on the back with some words about their journey and how it all started way back when. So I really uh, kind of wanted to get this in slab because I'm a fan of what they did and what they created with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, the book, you know, people scalp it on eBay because they didn't really have many, um, you know, issues printed. But, you know, if you look at this in a price guide, it's really not worth all that much money. Uh, the cover value is 10 bucks, but um, so these last four here are the ones that I'm kind of on the fence about. Uh, this one will probably be one of these two will have to sit out because these things have to, you know, cost the money. But uh, these two here, Star Wars, I'm pretty sure I'll end up getting graded. This I ha I'll try to see if I can get autographs on these and get some yellow labels, but that's pretty much my video for now. I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. Again, I'm relatively new to the YouTube community. Herc Collects Comics. Follow me on Twitter. Please subscribe to the channel. And I thank you very much for tuning in.